What we're exploring is the intersection of the worlds of theater and architecture, and it's something I've been thinking about for 25 years. There's a obvious overlap, and I'm very interested in how worlds are created and how they're created sometimes from the smallest pieces. Well, everything starts with utterances and gestures. We think about a sentence, it's, it's thought of as this thing that goes across the page, and everything that I've done is to sort of throw that to the wayside and look for identity inside of the many, many structures that could be in that sentence. Some people are really making a ballet or a, a very coherent choreography with their hands in particular, or the architecture of what they're saying. When you talk about the gap in a conversation, some can't find words, I, I wonder, is that related to in the design of a show or a place where there's an imperfection, where there's, there's not a hermetically sealed, complete world allows you to buy in more? That, That's interesting. You know, finding, That's very interesting. finding breaks or pauses. Uh -huh. Wow, so you're talking there about the audience or about the creative team? I'm talking about the creative team and the physical world. And sometimes synthesizing down something to one small gesture gives more, more power to a space. You're making a 360 degree full environment so that at the moment of rehearsal, the entire crew can melt away. You know, when you're working with the people from a place that their experiences, you know, start to, start to permeate the work, right? But I think the, the same, can also be true of the, the, the feeling of space around you. And if we believe that we are here in this apartment and this apartment is real, we're going to behave a little bit differently than, than we are if there's a giant pipe right here with, with green paint all over it, right? That's interesting. It, it, it affects That's you. That's very interesting. Yeah. We come to the theater to be changed, I think. Otherwise, why would you want to watch a story? I take a point of view, sometimes of a character, sometimes of a space, but that point of view can change throughout the piece. So I think maybe the best example that's coming to my head right this minute might be Long Day's Journey Into Night with Jessica Lang, where she was a, she's a heroin addict who has uh, kicked the habit. She's the mother of the household, but her family's eyes are on her all the time. So at the beginning, she's lit with absolute, she might as well be lying in a down bed. It, she's beautiful. Lighting the, loves her. Lighting loves her, which means kind of warmth for her own skin color and whatever costume that she's wearing. Where you, she's an angel. But then if you go to the end of the play, she's been doing heroin upstairs, hiding it from everybody. The lighting made her skin bone white. But because I could really focus in on her, that allowed the context of everybody else. I also had the ability to then form them. So then there's two point of views going on at once because we're not doing what a camera does, which is I'm doing a close up on you. I'm doing a full stage. You have to look at the full stage. So she could be bone white and they could be in a completely different kind of light. Fascinating. I think about that part of the museum, I was talking about Berlin, but that room where there's just one little teeny piece of light is, light is the only possibility of hope. It is, you know, for many years I worked on that, uh, on that space without any light, and only the last minute when it was already almost built, finished, I inserted the light because I read an account of a, of a survivor many, many years later who said that she held on to the light, and that's survival, holding on to a light that she saw out of, out of those cattle cars that she was pushed into. And I thought, yes, without light, they would be useless to, to do anything. There would be no meaning in these events if there was no light. It's something I've also learned from theater, that without light, there is no, there is no world. There is no world. You're There's... able to take that world away. It's a physical reaction that we have to light. We can't control that. It bypasses the prefrontal cortex. We believe we're in a space that we're, cre that we're creating. We're not creating reality. It's all illusion. Um, and 
believability has something to do with the organic nature of things so that technology which in the old days used to be in a sense limited to how many uh, handles and how much uh, uh, ability to control individual lights at once now we have so much control of so many qualities of light, color, motion, pan tilt, uh, uh, pattern, projected image, uh, intensity, angle. We're able to make things very smooth, very fluid, and that's more organic. Yeah. And the more organic light is, the more believable it is, because it's like the sun.